Here today with another power station. This is an all powers. This one does 1056 watts for capacity. It can do 1600 watts out through a pure sine wave inverter with a 3200 watt surge. So that'll pretty much power any appliances you would want to run during a power outage. Now you can combine this with a solar panel. I did get the kit that came with the solar panel. I'll show you that in a little bit. <clears throat> and if you combined AC input with the solar panel input, in theory, you could charge this from zero to full in less than one hour. It also supports charging through 12 volt. Here you have 12 volt out, but there's a 12 volt in, so you can, you know, plug this in in your car as you're on a road trip or whatever. It's pretty standard on all of these. This is lithium iron phosphate which is safer than lithium ion. Doesn't have a whole lot of ports, but it has enough to get the job done. It has two USB-C that are 100 watt. It has two USB-A that can do 15 watt, which is about anything that USB-A will do. And then you have four AC plugs here. They have these really nice rubber like gasket deals to keep dust and other things out of there. Now I have drawn this down to 54% from what it shipped at so I can do some solar charging on it. What I actually did is we have an ice maker over in the corner. I'll show you that. I have that ice maker there and I've run it on that for like two or three hours and it got down to 54%. I'm going to run this reverse osmosis picture here in a minute off of it to show you that. Then we'll get it outside and we'll go ahead and get some solar charging on it. Now I will say it is kind of cloudy today, so we're not gonna get the best performance out of the solar panel, but it's monsoon season here and it's rained for like two weeks and today looks like the best day to do it. So we'll see what it'll do under the conditions and we'll temper our expectations. You do have a door and this is where your solar connector will be. And then you have your reset button and your AC charge. Uh, you would also do your DC in from your 12 volt from your car through that connector. All right, so we've got the reverse osmosis loaded with water and ready. Let me just get the power cord in here. If I can see what I'm doing. Oop, gotta flip it around. There we go. So this will turn on in a second. Oh, I guess I gotta turn the AC on, huh? So we'll turn the AC on. This will turn on down here in a second. There we go. It does that even in the wall. So this is gonna do a pre-flush real quick. Pulling the watt, 18 watts, not too bad. Basically this just has a filter here and a filter here. One's carbon and one is the actual um, like reverse osmosis membrane. And it just pumps the water through. So it shouldn't use a whole lot of power, but I'm testing this thing. I'm testing this thing at the same time. So I just tried to kill two birds with one stone. Obviously I told you, you know, the, what you can plug into here. You can plug a lot of stuff in here. I could drag the fridge out and show you that, but like, that's not exciting. This is actually kind of exciting. It'll be done here in a second. And then we'll tell it to make 1.2 liters of water. Really like this picture. It's borosilicate glass. It's a nice little touch. It's honestly probably the most expensive thing in here. All right, there we go. I'm curious to see um, how much I could run this off of this because this would be kind of cool to take camping. You know, you'd always have like great water and sometimes like well water and stuff and you could do your water through here. It actually looks like most of the outputs just the display and stuff. Oh no, there we go. There's just a lag in that. Okay, good to know. So there is a lag in the display. So we'll go ahead and tell it 1.2 liters and it'll start. This thing actually works pretty quick. Doing about 20 watts, 23 watts, 25 watts. 26 watts. So realistically, I could run this thing for about 20 hours probably. And it takes like two minutes, three minutes, I think to completely fill, if that. It's gonna obviously depend on how much stuff's in the water and stuff, but because the more stuff's in the water in theory, the harder it should be to push through the membrane. But like 26 watts, you know, that is fantastic. I might actually get one of these for my friend that lives off grid. I have other portable reverse osmosis that aren't as nice, but this one's nice because you set it on the counter and then they can take their discard water and like water plants with it or whatever. We'll just go ahead and jump to when this is done. So this does have an app. I'm gonna let this run while I talk to you. I'm installing the app right now. We'll go ahead and try to set that up too. As you can see here, you hold the DC button for three seconds to turn the Bluetooth on. And I apologize for that noise. It's a little annoying. So the app is opening. I'm sure it's gonna want me to register. Yeah, so there we go. Now it's gonna back flush a little and then it'll drop down, you know, in the wattage, but 
Oh, it actually did not ask me to register, which is pretty cool. So, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. Doing this in real time just to show you. Oh, yeah, it immediately saw it. So we're connecting. Can show you here. And pretty much I can turn off the DC, turn on off the DC, turn on and off the AC. It's showing, you know, the status and everything. Uh, I can change the Hertz. It looks like maybe I can, I can go from 50 Hertz to 60 Hertz. So I'm going to empty this into my Nalgene bottle and we'll run it again so we can watch the app. Okay, that's doing its backflow again. So we'll come in here to the app. And yeah, it's showing exactly what the screen does. 18 watts of output. So I'm gonna let this run while I go dig out the solar panel and stuff. So right now it's just started. So we're only getting about 60 watts of input right now. Let me adjust the panels just a little and then we'll show you the front of them and we'll check the app. We're set up right now and we're getting 119 watts in. Pretty good considering it is but 8, 10 in the morning and the sun is still at quite an angle. And I don't have the angle optimized here either, but pretty good for what we've got. Uh, there are thunderstorms and stuff coming later. So this is just what I have to work with today. And it's the first day I've had in quite a while. It'll be good, but it's staying pretty rock steady at about 119. We'll take a look over here at the panel or at the thing itself. And yeah, 118, 119 not bad at all it is a little interesting that it'll show the discharge time but it doesn't seem to want to show the recharge time so you'd have to kind of you know napkin math it yourself but i'm gonna let this run for an hour i'm gonna shower and stuff it should be fine out here no one's gonna steal it or anything and uh, we'll come back then it's been out here running all morning we're at 67 percent we're still pulling about 130 watts it's gotten higher than that, but it's also gotten lower than that. The sun's starting to get a, not a great angle out here, but for a 200 watt panel, considering it's partially cloudy, I, I'd say this is doing quite well.